Let's just do a couple of uh, friction examples. There's nothing new here. This is just Newton's second law applied um, in the way that we've always applied Newton's second law, but with the additional information that the kinetic frictional force is equal to mu sub k fn. And so we can actually plug in for that rather than me having to give you a value for it. And the static frictional force is smaller than or equal to uh, mu sub s fn. Okay. So let's just go ahead and set up the problem. Say I've got, um, let's say my book, let's say this is just a, a textbook on a table, right? So the purple is just the table and I give it a shove. I give it a shove just to move it out of the way and I give it an initial velocity. So I'm telling you the initial velocity is 10 meters per second. Um, that's probably a little fast, but that's okay. Give it a shove. Um, and uh, so how far does it go? Does it fall off the edge of the table? So it's going to give you some numbers. Mu sub k is 0.5, mu sub s is 0.6. Mass of the book is 5 kilograms. It's a heavy book. Um, so how do we do this problem? Well, we give it a shove and we're going to draw a picture. Say that the book goes some distance delta x. I guess I'm defining my x and y axes. I'm going to say plus x is the direction that the book has moved. And plus y, I'm just going to call that up because of a lack of any other reason to call it anything else. Now this is a situation where I'll just do an, uh, a real quick um, aside as far as choosing the plus x direction as the direction of the displacement of the book. That is fine, but I do want to point out that when I give it a shove, what's the direction of the acceleration? The book is slowing down, so the direction of the acceleration is actually going to be in that direction. So maybe it would have made more sense to choose the left as the direction of the of plus x because um, we sometimes save ourselves some mathematical um, uh, effort if we choose plus x as being the direction of acceleration. But this is just a good example of let's say I choose the incorrect direction. I put that in quotes because it's not really incorrect. But let's say I don't go by the convention because I didn't realize the acceleration was to the left. Okay. So let's go ahead and set this up as a Newton's second law problem. Um, draw first, draw a free body diagram of the mass of the book. In a free body diagram of the book, uh, we go through our list of forces. There's a normal force upwards from the surface. There's a gravitational force downwards due to the pull of the earth or the weight. Um, is there a string attached? No. Is there a spring attached? No. Um, is there friction? Yes, there is friction. Um, I have told you that, and so now the question is, is you, you do need to get the correct direction of friction, right? Friction resists the motion, so we know that the frictional force is in this direction. And then we should go one step farther and say, do we know what kind of friction it is? Sometimes it's not going to be obvious whether it's static or kinetic, but in this case, the, box, uh, the book is moving relative to the table, so it must be kinetic friction because it's sliding friction, kinetic friction, FFK. So this is a correct free body diagram of the problem. We then write, so the steps, right? Draw your picture, choose your axes, draw a free body diagram, write down the relevant equation, which is F net equals MA, break everything into components so that we get F net X equals M times the acceleration in the X direction, and F net Y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And then we fill in, so this is the way we always do it. We write down the equation, if it's a two-dimensional two problem, we have to write down f net x and f net y, and then we fill in f net x and f net y from the free body diagram. So it's, it's, uh, we ignore the right-hand side at first, we just simply write down the forces from the free body diagram, and then we ask, what do we know about the accelerations, and we fill in the, le the right-hand side. Did I say uh, the left-hand side? F net X and F net Y are on the left-hand side. I can't remember if I called it right-hand side. Um, we fill that in from the free body diagram, and then we fill in whatever we know from the right-hand side, given the problem statement. So we're going to start with F net X and just fill in the left-hand side first, F net X, which of these forces have an X component, and from the free body diagram, we see the, the only force that has an X component is this one, and it's pointing in the minus X direction. So it's going to be minus FFK, because remember the 
magnitude of the force is FFK, the direction is explicitly put in as a plus or minus sign, and that is the only force in the x direction equals mAx. And notice I just didn't plug in anything on the right yet. I'm just doing the left-hand side plug-in. And then from this one, F net Y, um, look at the forces. Fn in the, is, has only a Y component and is pointing in the plus Y direction. So it's going to be plus Fn. And the other force here is Fg, and that's pointing opposite the plus Y direction. So that's going to be a minus sign, minus Fg equals M a sub y. So I've just plugged in for the left hand side from the free body diagram. Okay, now let's pay attention to the right hand side. The right hand side, uh, a sub x, we know that it's accelerating in the x direction. Again, it's actually accelerating in the minus x direction, but let's pretend we didn't, we, we just, we didn't realize that or we're not sure or whatever. So we just have a sub x is an unknown. a sub y is zero because it's we set up the problem so the acceleration is along the x-axis. It's not jumping off the table. So a sub y equals zero. There are going to be situations where, where we don't know for sure if it's jumping off the table. Um, how would that be? Well, like it, let's say I was pulling this with a rope. This is an, an, an aside, a big aside. Big, if I were pulling this with a rope, um, if I pulled hard enough, I could make it jump off the table. Um, but anyway, that's, that's not the situation. This situation is a sub y equals zero. So therefore, I can go ahead and write what I finally get when I finish. So, so again, the steps. I'm going to go through the steps again. We draw a picture. We write down our axes. We draw, do a free body diagram. We write down. We take components of everything, including, and then we write down f net equals ma. We write down it in component form, f net x equals max, f net y equals may. We plug in for f net from the free body diagram. We then plug in for a and m. I guess we do know m, so there you go, going through the process. m is five kilograms. So we can plug these things into the right-hand side. So now we're done with the problem-solving process, right? The problem-solving process gets us only so far. Um, so we have, uh, what we have at this point is minus ffk, is equal to m a sub x, where m is five kilograms. I'm just not plugging in any numbers yet because it's always a bad idea to plug in numbers too early. Um, Fn minus Fg is equal to zero, where Fg is equal to, we know Fg is five kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's just the value of Fg. Um, that's just the weight because we're given the mass. Okay, so I'm just I identifying we know this and we know this. Okay, so now what? Again, without even looking at the problem statement, we can go ahead. Actually, there's one more thing that we know that we didn't that we didn't plug in, and that's what's new with friction is that we know FFK. FFK is by definition equal to mu k Fn. So we can go ahead and plug that in there so that we can say, oh, okay, so we have minus mu k fn is equal to m a sub x. And again, we know mu sub k, we know m, we don't know fn, we don't know a sub x. But from the second equation, we've got fn minus fg equals zero. Notice I still haven't even thought about what we're asking for. Uh, say, oh, what can we figure out from this equation? Maybe we need to know it, maybe we don't. But uh, from this second equation, I can identify fn equals fg. And remember, we know fg. Oh, look. That, so now I'm just solving. So now I'm doing math. So I, I am, I'm beyond the sort of physics problem solving, and now I'm just doing math and solving for what we don't know. Even though I don't know what we, I haven't even thought about what we need to know, just solving for what we don't know. Um, Fn equals Fg, and so that can go back into the x equation. So therefore, minus mu k Fg equals m a sub x. Oh, look at that. We know mu k, we know Fg, we know m. So the solving Newton's second law, x equation, y equation together, we can determine a sub x. So therefore, a sub x is equal to minus mu k fg, which is just mg, over m. Oh, look, I didn't even need to plug in numbers. That's the beauty of leaving letters before you plug in numbers, right? I didn't plug in the numbers because m's cancel. And we save ourselves some effort. We save ourselves the errors that we make using our calculator, which a lot of those errors are made. And so what 
this Newton's second law problem has told us without even asking what we're asking for is that there is an acceleration in the x direction of minus mu kg. Look, look there, that minus sign tells us that the acceleration is actually in that direction with a magnitude of mu kg. We can go ahead and plug in and say, okay, it's got an acceleration to the left of 4.9 meters per second squared. All right, so now that's as far as Newton's second law takes us. What is the question asking? The question asks how far the object goes. I either draw a new picture or I come back to my picture and I say, oh, okay, what we want to determine is delta x. We now know acceleration, initial velocity. This is just a kinematics problem. This is a one-dimensional kinematics problem, right? It's one-dimensional kinematics. So we now have to do our one-dimensional kinematics. We've already defined our direction. We've already drawn our picture. We next, what's the step, next step with one-dimensional kinematics? Okay, how did I know it was one-dimensional kinematics? Because I'm asking for delta x. All Newton's second law gives us is forces and accelerations. I'm asking for delta x, so that means we need to relate accelerations to positions, which is a kinematics problem. So the next step in a kinematics problem is to write down what we know and what we don't know in far as, the, as far as the kinematics variable. So in order to make sure um, we know which direction we're going, I'm going to go ahead and write the equations first. One half a sub x t squared plus, and this is not a projectile motion problem, right? This is a one-dimensional kinematics problem with an arbitrary acceleration. Vx equals V0x plus a sub xt. Vx squared equals V0x squared plus 2a sub x delta x. So there's only, there's motion in the x direction, so we don't need to write down any kinematic equations for the y direction. We know that we want to find, now I'm going through the variables, delta x, we know a sub x is minus 4.9 meters per second squared. That minus sign is clearly super important. We don't know the time. We do know v, v0x equals plus uh, 10 meters per second. We give it sort of a quick shove. Uh, 10 meters per second. Going through all my variables, vx final. What's vx final? We do know vx final because we're asking how far does it move when it comes to a stop. So Vx final is zero. So that is additional information you had to determine from the problem statement. Um, and that is all of my variables. One, two, three, four, five. That's all my variables. And then we solve for, for what we don't know. Uh, the easiest thing, now we look at these three equations. We can start plugging in. But if you can look at them, you might see that this is the best equation to use. Zero equals 10 plus 10 meters per second, making sure I am carrying the signs, just to make sure I'm paying attention to signs, plus 2 times minus 4.9 meters per second squared times delta x, and therefore, and this is where you can see that delta x works out to be a positive number, so we can go ahead and solve for delta x, and make sure again to, to really pay attention to algebra. I'm seeing a lot of people making algebraic mistakes. We're get, if we subtract the 10 meters per second squared from both sides, we're going to get minus 100. Oh, I can leave it as 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second squared. Right, We're subtracting that from both sides. And then we're dividing by 2 times minus 4.9 meters per second squared. Pay attention to that one-dimensional algebra. We end up getting plus 10. Oops, what was it? I need to look at my calculator. 10 point, excuse me, 10.2 meters. Okay, so we gave it kind of a fast shove. It's going to go 10.2 meters. Uh, that's longer than any table, so it will definitely, if it was, if the, if we were on a floor or ground, it would go 10.2 meters. That's how far it would go. Okie dokie.